Good evening, ACLC friends and family. Greetings and welcome to Chosen. Each week, we review portions of the True Family Values, which is biblical-based and focuses on five major areas of kingdom building, particularly on rebuilding the family, restoring the community, and renewing the nation and the world. Tonight, we will hear a dialogue on ideal marriage and family from Dr. Edwards. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the discussion. To begin our program, we will have Minister Choice Radcliffe from Archbishops to launch Lewis's Church of Little Rock International Deliverance Ministries to give us the opening prayer. Minister Radcliffe. Here we are. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Before Good evening. I pray, I would like to thank Ms. Narita Jenkins, Archbishop Silence Lewis, and the other persons on the chosen team for affording me this great privilege to use this virtual platform and podium to pray. So let me get myself in the presence of God for who he is. Amen. Saints of God, we are in the presence of the almighty God of heavenly parents who has equipped us with wisdom and faithful instructions to rebuild. On this list to rebuild, Lord, among the things is the ideal marriage and family. Infuse with your love and your understanding all presenters for this session of Chosen. Give the rest of us attentive listening capacity and let us take copious notes during the dialogue session. Lord, we offer our heart to you on the Zoom conference, recognizing that you are our heavenly parent and God all by yourself. Let us use whatever platform you have ascribed to us to introduce others to your blessings and make a dedicated effort to reach those who have not yet heard and seen the incremental blessings that you, God, has in store for them. God, continue to bless the bond between families because greater success is achievable through this bond. Let us continue to fellowship together. And we ask that the light from your lighthouse will continue to shine on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh in us tonight. Melt us, mold us, and use us to build your kingdom. We unite our heart with our true parents, true mother, and true father to bring back God in our homes, to bring back God in our churches, and to bring back God in our natural life. And finally, let us let God continue, continue, continue to be a living reality in us. Amen and adieu. Amen. Amen and Aju, thank you so much, Reverend Choice Radcliffe, for your beautiful prayer and for opening us up into this wonderful session and for really preparing the environment. So thank you so very much, um, Reverend Choice Radcliffe, for your beautiful prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. We will amen, now... amen. Amen, amen, said Dr. Rouse. <laughs> we will now um, invite up Dr. ki Hoon Kim to share his opening remarks. Dr. Kim is the chairman of the World Christian Leadership Conference and is also the American Clergy Leadership Conference co-chair emeritus. Dr. Kim, please let us hear from you. Uh, thank you, uh, Young Soon, and thank you, Dr. Walsh and all ACSC uh, leaderships. Uh, continue your great effort uh, and promoting and cultivating the spirit of a true family. Uh, as you all know, uh, Mother Moon uh, just uh, uh, completed uh, Father Moon's uh, uh, ascension uh, ninth year anniversary uh, last weekend. And during the, this uh, celebration, uh, ninth year anniversary of uh, Father Moon's uh, ascension, uh, Mother Moon uh, that uh, did it uh, over 30 uh, great uh, events, we very successfully offering 
before uh, God and um, Father Moon. And not only we celebrate and uh, we completed this uh, Songwa anniversary celebration, uh, Mother Moon uh, initiated and upgraded uh, for new beginning. So we heard about the next seven years through our mother's vision uh, for the sake of God's kingdom. You all know uh, about the Father Moon's emphasizing peaceful family is a building block for the sake of God's kingdom and God's kingship. So family is so crucial uh, for the sake of God's kingdom. The uh, same way a uh, mother moon uh, that started uh, this uh, true family movement. And she confirmed again before and this uh, celebration we call victory celebration and true family movement will be next three years and next seven years until 2027 will be our major activities. Not only ACLC, not only WCLC, not only Family Federation, not only UPF, all organization beyond our church related organization, we must focus, you say, 100% investment, full investment for this true family movement in order to build peaceful world. So without a peaceful family, no peaceful nation, no peaceful world, no kingdom of heaven on earth for the sake of God and for the sake of all humankind. So today, uh, ACLC hosting this uh, true family uh, value uh, lecture series. So I was very, very impressed. And I like to really give my appreciation to ACLC and all the members. And today's uh, Dr. Hanna Edward uh, lecture. So thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Ralph. Thank you, Dr. Kim, Dr. Edwards. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, also, thank you, Dr. Kim, for joining us once again on our program and for opening this session. And we hope to see you again for the next many more sessions to come. So thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. We will now hear from Reverend Joshua Holmes, the National Director of YCLC, who will update us on the Young Christian Leadership Conference. Reverend Joshua Holmes. Good evening or afternoon, wherever you are in this world. Thank you so much. First and foremost, uh, thank you to Dr. Kihun Kim for your words, as well as Dr. Luan Rouse, uh, Dr. Tanya, Reverend Mark Hernandez, uh, Minister Reiko Jenkins, and Minister Youngson Quinn. I'm grateful to be here. It's good to see you, Bishop Edwards, as well. Um, my wife is here too, Takayo Hiraki. <laughs> Hello. Um, I was deeply moved, and I want to echo something that uh, Dr. Kim mentioned, and that uh, Mother Moon has really been pushing, and she's laid out this heavenly revelatory master plan, but it requires to, for, for really building a world of peace. And it requires total investment. And I felt that I watched this report and I saw all these things that Mother Moon is striving to do. 
putting her life on the line for the sake of this world, which is why all of us here really honor her and respect her because we see that in her. But I know it requires total investment. And I've been feeling that myself, just thinking about the responsibilities. I just moved into New York City on Tuesday. I am living here in the city together with my wife and we have started our, our local ministry and involving as assistant pastors uh, here at the Manhattan family. And uh, it's exciting, but I see the city and I was just sitting down at an event with the future mayor of uh, New York City. And they were mentioning how there's 3,800 people leaving the city every single day on a daily basis. They're leaving, they're, they're, they're moving to Long Island or they're moving to Florida <laughs> or they're moving somewhere else. They're moving away from the city. Um, 3,800 and maybe a small town mind is small. I mean, it's large, but for New York, it's not a lot, but it's a testimony to something. Uh, and that's that there's a lot of work to do. And the judge that was there sharing this was explaining why is this happening? Because crime is at its highest in the city and people don't wanna live around crime. I mean, that's kind of natural as human beings, we wanna be safe. Uh, you know, homelessness is on a rise in the city, drug usage, opioid, uh, the opioid crisis, which has been around for a while and has only gotten worse. We have the deadliest, uh, deadliest rate of increase in drug overdose in this last year than we've ever had, ever. It's a 30% increase in drug overdose and usage and misusage. Uh, that's what we're facing. So people feel like they need to leave the city. Um, and so we are faced with this kind of situation. I'm here locally and then I'm seeing what Mother Moon's trying to do. She's trying to rebuild and rebuild in a time uh, where, where people are, are trying to escape to find a solution. I'm really moved by that, but I know it requires us to ditto what she is doing and that's taking total responsibility and making our full investment. And so as YCLC, uh, my update's very simple. Before Mother Moon comes in December, it is my mission uh, in total investment to reach all 50 states of the United States of America. That's my mission. God has put that on my heart and uh, I've been calling around, making my rounds around the United States of America to connect young righteous leaders to YCLC to put it into an important perspective for ACLC is that seven years down the line, you know, we're passing the baton to the next generation all across the nation. These, the first generation ministers are passing the baton to the second generation ministers. Are those young ministers going to know the true family values? Are they going to lead and walk and minister with the understanding of these values that we've so masterfully heard from Dr. Tanya? We have to make sure that's set in place, that the mentorship is there. Um, and, and that's what YCLC is here to do, to reach that younger demographic and connect them through the mentorship of ACLC and that foundation. So I'm please encourage, I'm encouraging everyone, please, if you know a young righteous leader to reach out, connect us and we'll get them engaged. They may not wanna join ACLC, but YCLC in its youthfulness may be the place for them. So. That's what we're excited to do. It's going to require total investment. And I know that they're there. Uh, my final thing I want to say is Mother Moon the other day gave a, gave a message. And she said, the true leaders who are taking the lead, the righteous people, are the ones heaven has been preparing. And what she was referring to is that the people are there. We just have to connect to them. We just have to connect. So I'm very excited and very grateful. Thank you so much. And please enjoy it the discussion between Dr. Tanya, Dr. Rouse, and Dr. Kim. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Joshua Holmes. And we pray that you can find many righteous leaders. Mm -hmm. Amen. All the best to you and all that you do. Anytime during the presentation, if you have questions or comments that you'd like answers to, please type them in the chat box. And later, Reverend Hernandez, the ACLC National Executive, Executive Director will try to address them at the end. So please type away if you have any questions or comments. So let us now proceed to hear the dialogue on ideal marriage and family um, from Dr. Edwards and Dr. Rouse. 
Um, I would like to introduce our speakers um, once again. Uh, Dr. Tanya Edwards is the Director of International Affairs for the World Christian Leadership Conference. She has served on the Executive Committee for the American Clergy Leadership Conference and is a member of the 172 clergy who attended Reverend and Mrs. Moon in Korea. She is also blessed in marriage to Bishop Jesse Edwards, who I believe is also on this call here with us. And I would also like to introduce Dr. Luan Rouse. Dr. Rouse is a national co-chairman of the American Clergy Leadership Conference and is a professor at the Unification Theological Seminary. So Dr. Edwards and Dr. Rouse, you have the floor. Thank you, Young Soon. I appreciate having the floor. <laughs> I want to welcome up Dr. Tanya Edwards as she comes before us. I'd like to thank Dr. Kihu Kim for joining us tonight and making plain some very important points that I would like to talk to Dr. Dr. Edwards. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you tell us about what is happening on Wednesday with WCLC? Many people are asking in California, South Pacific people are asking how to be a part of the World Christian Leadership Conference. It's important that we hear that from you, and then we'll go in to our conversation and question. Oh, thank you, Dr. Rouse. Uh, first of all, this Wednesday is very exciting. We're having a very exciting time. Every month we have a webinar with WCLC with a different continent our country and this month we're having it with Africa and we are so excited because we have so many good speakers and so many things that are going to be happening and um, if you would like to send your information into info at wclc.org so that we could send you the registration link and send you any information about our webinars please send us a request or your name and email to info at wclc.org. Uh, I think that we will be having a wonderful time and we're so excited because we haven't had much contact with Africa being involved with, uh, with WCLC, but this is a starting point that we are so excited to begin and end with it. We will end with an ongoing program with all our different continents, our different brothers and sisters across the world. And we want you, each and every one of you to join with us and be involved. So thank you very much. Great, Dr. Edwards. Now Will you give us your summation on the ideal marriage? Yes, um, thank you, Dr. Rouse. I wanna give a summation of the last two weeks that I have given lectures on the ideal marriage and family. First of all, we're all family. There's different kinds of family, but we wanna talk specifically about the family that God had placed in the beginning, in the garden, which was Adam and Eve, and now we have to take the mantle and go forth to produce a family that is God-centered, God-loving, God-caring, and we want to rebuild, restore, and renew. Uh, there's no, uh, there's not a wrong reason why this is called chosen. I think it's called chosen because we have been chosen by God, not only individually, but we have been chosen as a family. We have been chosen as a husband and wife to promote the blessing, to promote the love that we can share with one another. We talked about the four great realms of heart. That's the grandfather, the parents, the children, and the siblings. And with all of these together, we work in harmony. We work together. And as Father Moon has stated, that the family is the school of love. We are learning every day. When you get married, you learn to live with your spouse. You learn what they like and don't like. You learn what to do, what not to do. You learn each other's loves, compassions, and so forth. And um, uh, so we... Um, 
love family and we we talked about the building blocks of the family the blessing is the reinforcement and the restoring of the marriage as adam and eve had not fulfilled their commitment that god had asked them to do which was be fruitful multiply and have dominion we find that God not only gave them the commandment, but we are to follow the same commandment and being fruitful, which is meaning to mature and to grow, multiply, which means to have children and have dominion, which is to have perfection in the world and in your life, perfection in your family. We have to understand that the family is a deeper love. We talked about loving your neighbor as yourself, as the scripture says. It's not just loving your neighbor. You have to love your spouse as or more than your neighbor. You have to love your spouse. They're your neighbor also. And you have to love your neighbor as yourself and uh, respect. And the women are to respect and honor their husbands, as we were talking about. And the scripture says that husbands love your wives as Christ has loved the church. We have to learn how to love. We have to build. The Bible says that learning, we are ever learning in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior. But I take that that we're ever learning in everyday life. We're ever learning in our marriage. I've been married 50 years and I'm still learning. I am still <laughs> learning things. And, uh, you know, I'm learning what to do, what not to do. You say, oh, you should have learned that a long time ago. Yes, maybe so. But maybe some of us are slower learners than that others. I don't know. But I'm still <laughs> learning. I'm still growing. And, you know, I don't think I'll ever stop growing. I don't ever think I'll stop learning. I don't think I'll ever stop receiving knowledge. You know, I would love to go back to college. I would love to learn more things. I would love to promote myself more on a, on a religious level. But I understand that there is opportunities that God allows for us. And there are opportunities that we are to have in our families and grow with our children. We have to bring peace in our homes and our family and our children. And I'm so glad for the opportunity to talk about the ideal marriage and family because this is something that we all need to learn and to grow and mature in. So I wanna thank you very much, Dr. Rouse, for the opportunity to be able to give the lecture these last two weeks. I've, I've been amazed and I've been joyful in doing so. So thank you again. Thank you. You know, Dr. Edwards, not many people have really been talking about the ideal marriage in Christianity. Very few sermons do we hear preach about the ideal marriage. It seems oftentimes that the ministry is geared towards the individual and not towards the couple. How can we help really change that dynamic? Well, first of all, I think that we need to acknowledge the blessing. And in doing so, I think that we can also produce from ourselves within the Christianity walk and the Christianity world, how it is that a husband and wife can be ultimately bound together bound together and we're bound in unity we're bound in love and i think that if we just get it with our brothers and sisters that christianity may not exactly teach the ideal marriage and family but as we walk the walk and talk the talk we can bring others into realizing that the marriage and family can be an ideal situation, an ideal realm, which is in the heart of God. Father and Mother Moon brought really a, I mean, it is so profound and unique that still today it is blowing minds. Starting in 1960 with their own marriage, they like 
flip the script, so to speak, on what marriage ought to be about. And especially the wedding ceremony and how we approach family ministries. And they brought a focus in that talks about the four rams of heart. Could you say a little more about how do we approach now leading individuals, educating them towards being a healthy family, taking in mind the four rams of heart? Well, I don't think that respect, and I said this before, I don't think respect is taught enough in our homes and our families, at least today, and which is a very sad situation. We need to teach respect and you cannot love if you don't have respect. You cannot respect if you don't have love. And so I think that have knowing the four great realms of heart, there's a reason why it's great. The word great is in there. The four great realms of heart is because the grandfather who is to take the uh, parental role, the, the subject role and to teach and to mentor uh, the parents. And then the parents are to take on the parental role after the grandparents and then pass that on down to their children. I think that if we can teach this, that if they could just concentrate on the four great realms of heart alone and to understand the reason why we are supposed to be fruitful, multiply and have dominion in the process, knowing the four great realms of heart, I think that this is going to be substantial. We need to teach this. We need to educate more and uh, love more. And I think all of this will come outstanding as we go along in our relationship with one another. You know, Marie asked me for, to make sure that I was there to teach our grandchildren. And, you know, not that we don't trust our children. Our children I teach, love them, teach them very well, the things that are secular. But what she I knew what she meant, what she intended was we were where we're grown in Christ, in God, in the understanding, our blessed marriage as a couple. We bring a uniqueness that our children are yet to have in passing on to our children. Part of this, Dr. Edwards, I understand from what God gave to true parents to bring to the world, to turn us away from being in the sinful lineage to being of God. Could you say about how the ideal marriage leads us into a sinless lineage with God? Well, sure. Um, first of all, I just want to say God is love. Mm. Without the love from God that we've inherited, it's going to be very hard to produce love to others. I want to go back about the blessing and that topic. And that is that when Adam and Eve fell, there had to be a substantial restoring. There had to be a substantial re unification, so to speak. And there has to be a, a love that I don't think Adam and Eve could share because they did not fulfill the commandments of God. But we can take up that mandate and have the blessing and re take the holy wine and we can take the holy water and we can receive all the blessings through the blessing and regenerate regen regen um, the blessing, the commandment that God had given to us, reunite our relationship with God, reunite that falling nature by taking of the holy wine and by fo following through with the blessing. And um, I think I answered your question. I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, well, well you, you are there. You remind me of words that Dr. Kim spoke to us earlier. Th this value, this of parenting, this 
value of our children gathering at this important importance and significance to do in our love. And as parents, we have that human responsibility. The importance that I find in the true value teachings and in the ideal that you are speaking of today that challenges us, but yet it is so important and significant, is that it's talking about making a more peaceful world, a beautiful world, a pathway to which we can really reach that place that true mother, true father have been talking about, a, a real hope for world peace, a real hope for our families to be able to stay together in this genuine love for one another. It's remarkable to me, Dr. Edwards, and I guess where I go to with this with you now, let's just witness a little bit about Father and Mother Moon. I mean, so many things were, were put out there before Father Moon ascended that were falsities, even the way in which messiahship is described. The, the truth is that receiving the directives that they did to usher in tree of time. There's this ad reality, the second advent. Yeah, I think we get caught and we think about just the, the biblical uh, revelations that we gained and, and we thought, well, God is, has stopped revealing. But God has revealed a new, real, not a new understanding or inter interpretation, but a new word. God has actually revealed a new word in true parents that says, Watch how we're living. Watch who we are in God as a husband and wife together. Watch how we're coming before you, committing our lives to the building of the kingdom of God. Then join us. Join us in building this kingdom of God and that the foundation has to be on true love. So I guess my question to you in response to the presentations that you've been giving about the ideal marriage and family is how do we really lay the foundation of true love that we can be in our marriages like Father and Mother Moon have been with each other? Is that the child is still there? <laughs> it's in the I think about the wow, so your internet connection. I don't know where you stand uh, at maybe a hotel or uh, from Airbnb houses, uh, but however, your internet connection is not really uh, great. And, you know, freezing and voice is on and off. Uh, you know, that uh, uh, Dr. Edward, thank you so much for your uh, last three uh, previous uh, Monday, uh, you sharing about the true uh, family uh, value. Uh, okay. Lectures. Now, Dr. Yeah, based on uh father mother moon's uh, teaching um this is many people's couples experiences yes we know uh living for the sake of others uh, father moon all the time mentioned or some other moon also all the time mentioned you know why live for the sake of partner husband husband uh, as well. And you know, one thing, uh, even though we have this kind of bond with husband and wife, and many secular marriage, they have problem after marriage. 
these uh, convictions as they live day by day, how can we strengthen this commitment not losing by day by day? Mm. So one point to, uh, I really impressed when I study about the uh, uh, Father Mother Moon's uh, true family uh, ministry, outreach activities. So Father Moon, uh, one day uh, asked, do you know, why did I match you? Did you know why I bless you? So many people ask, oh, yeah, for my spouse. Father Moon, you mentioned many times. For Mother Moon, you mentioned many times. And for the sake of, uh, you know, coming uh, generations. But one point, the uh, fundamental point, uh, we missed out. I bless you for the sake of God. So we're missing uh, this part. Yes, we must uh, love and we must uh, live centered on God. And then that relationship husband and wife will be centered on God. Without God, we have a good relationship, but this vertical relationship, whenever some outside impact come to this relationship, easy to break out, easy to, a, a Fraser mm -hmm. cannot born enough and we have uh, no strengths. But uh, when we have uh, many broken family uh, problems and all kind of family issues cause our social or destructions and our national issues. So uh, true family value ministry really stand for God-centered family. So that point when we practice this, yes, we have a lot of uh, difficulties, uh, marriage, and blessing, and however, uh, you know, we have a very clear uh, principle, principle, God-centered family. So very easy to, we uh, miss uh, this uh, core part. So uh, I believe with true family value, uh, this uh, uh, lecture uh, from the beginning to uh, you try to uh, practice and present uh, centered on God. This is really uh, core value uh, each of us are building or we building uh, our uh, family to be building block uh, for the sake of God and our family, our community, our nation and world. So I like to just mention, uh, so no matter what our core value is, when we connect with uh, heavenly parent and God. Mm. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you, Dr. Kim. I, I totally agree with you. If it's not God centered, that's the hope that we have is to center our families on God. We have to do that individually and therefore we have to do it with our families. So I agree totally. Thank you very much. Dr. Ross, are you still with us? You know, he's been on the road for the last week, going from going from LA to the Bay Area and going around to California and even to Las Vegas. He's been so busy. I don't know if he's in a hotel or if he's uh, in what his where he's at actually. Yeah, let us see my group. Uh, Governor Mark uh, uh, Hernandez, you can uh, take care on behalf of Dr. Wong. <laughs> yes, uh, hopefully he'll join us again and his connection will be good. It's just, uh, uh, especially on a Zoom call, that connection is so critical. And I, I pray that my connection will be good. And uh, yeah, well, Dr. Tanya, thank you so much for your uh, sum summation. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's Dr. Rao. Your summation that you gave and I, agree. Now, I just came on to say uh reverend hernandez thank dr kim i heard him bringing this home <laughs> for us today that's the way that god would have it because let me tell you in <laughs> california they've been calling me the rain thank man you. here lately because they needed rain <laughs> and the rain <laughs> is coming so i think the weather is interfering here but it's brought forth the genius of dr kim and dr edwards thank you so much so now, Reverend Hernandez, you take it from here with Dr. Kim while we've got this opportunity with him and bring this on home. Thank all of you. Thank, thank God for what's happening across America. We're going to do this, Dr. Kim. We thank God for true parents. It is real. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wiles. And also, I'd like to uh, this opportunity of reaching to uh, the administrative champions all the time. Uh, many uh, women in ministry, HLC, they work very uh, diligently. And uh, sometimes I see more than uh, any other organization, uh, women's in ministry, HLC, so active here, especially Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their voice is so loud, so loud, loud, so everybody can see a women's ministry, ACLC in Chicago. Um, so everybody can hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Yeah, so true. Thank you, Minister Jenkins and your co-chairs, Archbishop Solange Lewis, and also uh, Reverend Marilyn Kotelek from Oklahoma. Thank you for the, your leadership. And I know that Dr. Tanya Edwards and uh, Dr. Gilda Price, who's also on the call today, and uh, perhaps also uh, Minister Radcliffe have been involved in women, women in ministry. And we thank you so much because it really is the era of women. It really is the era of, of mothers. You know, we can see it in the leadership of Mother Moon, but also uh, in every woman of God who steps up and, and works together. Uh, that's what's so beautiful about women. Women really... <laughs> And then we can take a lesson from women and how well they work together and cooperate together and work on a collaborative way rather than just, hey, it's me, I'm just leading the way and follow me, everybody. But they collaborate and, and work together. Um, and, and I really honor that. I really am so grateful that you were on the call today, Dr. Kim, because you made a really important uh, distinction that the, the marriage blessing and marriage itself who created marriage? Who created that institution? And what happens in that institution? What is, happens in marriage? It is so that we may resemble God in a way that we can, in a way, own God or inherit God. And God is present with us. As a single man, it just doesn't work. As a single woman, it doesn't work. But when the two come together, as Jesus said, they are no longer two, but they are one. And that's why a man leaves his, his, his parents and cleaves to his wife, and let no man separate what God has put together. Let no man. Yes, and uh, we really that that marriage is that for that purpose. And I think you're right. Uh, and Dr. Ross was speaking of it too earlier when he was uh, 
in dialogue with you, Dr. Edwards, that because, because at the time, you know, Jesus said, I have so many things to tell you, but I, you can't bear them right now. I have so much. I came to bring you so much. And we know that that's why he promised that there would be a time when he wouldn't speak in Proverbs any longer, in, in parables, and that he would speak plainly of the Father. And I think that this, the revelation that comes from Father Mother Moon about God being our parent, right? And that in marriage, we, we, as we become parents in marriage, that's the highest form of resembling God. And that's the highest place where we can actually come to fathom God's heart for us, God's heart for creating, God's purpose of creating. It's all in parentism. It's all in, the, in this realm of becoming a parent. And not just any parent, but a parent, not just biologic, but a parent of the heart, of the spirit, of everything. It, it's, it's like Jesus saying back, Jesus saying, love the Father, love God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your strength. Because why? Because God, our heavenly parent, loves us that way. This is, this is our natural response to our heavenly parent. Love the heavenly parent with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your, your, all of your being, right? And then that would really, that's what I really believe we, he's been wanting, Jesus has been wanting to find someone to speak to and bring us that word. And he's done it uh, through yeah, Father. Father Lord. Now, love that vertical connection is first, right? And then the horizontal is going to work out, right? If we love God, then we have God's love. We possess God's love for ourselves, respect for ourselves. And we love others and respect others. As you were saying, Dr. Edwards, respect is so critical. Actually, if we were to, to comb through the Bible, we find so many references in Ephesians and in 1 Peter and Titus and many books of the Bible where, where Paul and, and the writers are saying, you know, for husbands to really, they're trying to, again, equate the love of Christ for the church to the love a husband should have for his wife. Right. And it seems to me that just like Jesus saying, you know, be therefore perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That in so many ways, we just we put all these amazing directions to love our enemy, to, you know, to do all the difficult things. We put them and say, oh, Jesus can do that. Jesus can do that. But mm, I don't know about me. I'm just this lowly believer. I'm just this lowly Christian. But how much joy we would give God. You know, if we aspire to it, I love uh, Ephesians 4, 2, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. You know, it, it applies to husbands and wives. It also applies to us as fellow uh, bearers of the cross, uh, as followers of Christ. And uh, I was at, uh, just this past weekend, I was at Oak Cliff Bible uh, Fellowship with Tony Evans, Dr. Tony Evans. And we got to meet after the service, but he gave a wonderful word on marriage and the role of men, especially. And uh, it's been like the second time I've heard this quote in just about three weeks from two different pastors. And that was uh, 1 Peter 3, 7. You know, be considerate of your, uh, as you live with your wives and uh, treat them with respect so that nothing hinders your prayers. Wow. It's like, so that you can really dialogue with God, you've got to treat your wife well. You've got to love her and respect her. And uh, because if you don't, then your prayer is going to, you're not going to be able to dialogue with God. Your connection is not going to be, you know, going to be a bad connection. So, yeah. Thank you so much for stressing that in your, uh, in your uh, exegesis. Um, I don't see it's around the six o'clock hour, the six or the seventh hour on the East Coast. And I'm just going to go back to the chat and see if there's any questions there. 
Oh, Pastor Mike put some Proverbs in there. Oh yeah, Proverbs has some great things about the value of a beautiful wife and a wonderful wife. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. The Bible reminds husbands over and over again to love their wives uh, and uh, for wives to uh, defer to their husband as, as their head, as Christ is the head, you know. But that is, that's a functional position. That's not because women are less than men. It's in the role of subject and object that a woman uh, defers to her husband as the, the head of the home, the head of the house, as, if, as the man defers to Christ as his head. Uh, that's a functional responsibility, but it's not a value. It's, it's not a value message because uh, God made us uh, equal in our value. Um, I don't see any other questions. So uh, as a final wrap up, before uh, you wrap up, uh, uh, may, I to... may I say may I say something regarding this whole concept of talking about marriage? Yes, I just wanted I shared with um, Minister Young soon um, today. Honey, would you come in here, please? I shared with Minister um, Young soon um, earlier today, and I'm glad that Dr. Kim, uh, you were here. <laughs> Wanted to let everybody know that as of yesterday, since we are talking about marriage, as of yesterday, me and First Lady Heather celebrated 13 years of marriage under the concept of what Father Moon and Mother Moon has taught us. But we celebrated 13 years of marriage together under the blessing. Three years ago, we went through the the blessing of the blessing ceremony, 13 years together married under the guideline of God and true parents. So yesterday we celebrated 13 years. I shared with Young Soon earlier today and wanted to share it with everybody here today, especially with Dr. Edwards and Dr. Kim. So I'm really glad that you're here today to share this and wanted to let you know 13 years of mm -hmm. understanding what this is all about. And as you just said, as you just said it, you know, Proverbs 18, 18, 20, um, 18, 22 says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor with God. Amen. And that's what you have to do is we as men have to obtain favor because God gives us that help me. And when he gives us that help me, we've got to obtain that favor with Amen. God. So I wanted to just share that. That 13 yeah, years you. as of yesterday. Thank you, Lady, Lady Heather, First Lady. <laughs> we applaud that. God bless. That's always great news when people celebrate godly marriages, marriages that are anchored and, and you know really built on the solid, the solid rock of the marriage blessing. It's really wonderful. Um, it's been so great to be with you all today. Before I go uh, to choose someone to pray, I'd like to show the flyer for the upcoming WCLC event that's happening tomorrow. That you can just go, the, the link was provided in the chat. I did it while we were there. I went and registered for it myself. It looks so exciting. They've got speakers, uh, Prophet Samuel Hadebe of the Revelation Church of God from South Africa and uh, Archbishop Johannes Ndanga and uh, Dr. Patrick Kidwell Rolay and also I'm trying to read them all. <laughs> There's another one there. And of course, our, our very own Dr. Kim, Dr. Rouse, and uh, an amazing missionary in Africa since 1975, Miss Kathy Rigney, Catherine Rigney, will be in this program. Just amazing uh, men and women of God. It ought to be awesome. 11 o'clock New York time. That's 10 o'clock Central and, you know, 8 o'clock Pacific time in the morning. There you go. It's Wednesday. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, Joel. It's not Tuesday. It's Wednesday. That's right. Thank you for correcting me. Appreciate that. Okay. So Wednesday, October 27th. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. And I noticed Dr. Gilda Price was on our call today. Dr. Gilda Price, can you unmute yourself and close us out in prayer? We'd be so honored.
I'm here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, the 172. Amen. Thank oh, yes. Know. And then thank God I was also in the 12th. Amen. That's right. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. Uh, but we, we can never really be happy just with what's happening. We always have to go back to the beginning and uh, pull father up again and uh, really rejoice. Uh, there is something to rejoice about whenever we come together. As a matter of fact, even when we are not together, we can rejoice. Ah, I just want to greet each and every one of Dr. Kikun King, uh, the Reverend Jenkins, Rico, and um, uh, Reverend Hernandez, praise God, um, Bishop, I think, I, I'm sorry, but um, I, I just want to greet, um, I think Reverend Routes, yes, and um, just, just greet everyone. God bless you. With the love of God, the love of true parents, the, the, the heavenly parents, and I, I, I'm so excited I, I, I can't find myself. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks be to God. Be We're right. all here, COVID and all. Thank God for everything. Father, friend, savior, strong deliverer, our bridge over troubled waters. God, Jehovah is your name. Lord, we are here, Father God, on an important task just for you. Yes, well, Father God, you created us in your likeness and your image. Father God, you have done everything that we should be like you. You have even delivered to us your, your beloved son and your beloved daughter. My God, that we, Father God, should inherit what you have set up for us from the beginning. Yes, we have tendencies, Lord, of forgetting. But you have made certain of this one thing that we can't forget. You've placed a doctor came in our midst. We have placed Dr. Rose and Dr. Augusta Starling. You've, you've placed people to constantly remind us that there is a goal in mind. Yes. And this goal is that the kingdom of heaven yes. must be on earth yes, heaven. as it is in heaven. Thank you. And Father God, we thank you as you keep nudging and you keep, uh, you, 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 you never cease, Lord God. You, you, you're never tired of us. Thank you. You, Father God, have taught us a family's heart, the family's spirit. Yes. What it is to love, how to love, the patience that we should have, the tolerance. My God, you, you, you nev you're never tired of us. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'll continue to smile on us and to give your angels charge over us, to keep us, Lord God, from day to day. That we can remember at all times that we are created in your likeness, yes, your image. Yes, Father. And Father, though there was uh, this discrepancy at the beginning with Adam and Eve, but Father, you have made reservation for us, Lord God, to be redeemed back to you, Lord Jesus, and not to be hanging out there as children without parents. No, Father, I just pray, Lord, that as we go this day, knowing, God, what you have placed in us, you have placed you in us, that though at times we forget that we are on a mission to be like you, 
to inherit all that you have given to us. I pray, Lord, you stir that gift, the spirit within us, that we will rise up to the honor of being your children, yes. your sons and daughters, your beloved children, that Mother Moon, Father Moon, and, and all the stewards of this wonderful organization will one day say it was good for us to be here. Thank Lord, you. we thank you. Thank you. We Lord. praise you. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, in the name of Heavenly Father, true parents, heavenly parents, and Gilda Price and family. And Jesus' name, adieu. Amen. Oh, Amen. Jesus. Amen. The beautiful Amen. prayer, Dr. Price. Thank you so much. Wow. Bless you. Bless you. Wow. Bless you. Wow. Thank you. I, I know that there is a, a quest here for the video, but my hair isn't pretty. And, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I did not put on my best dress for today. <laughs> so... I, I, will, I will be on. I, I will be on video, but not today. Help me today. <laughs> Forgive God me. You. God bless you. <laughs> oh, I love Dr. Good. We have our days when our video is on, and sometimes yes. the days when the video is off. But thank you for praying. It's such a powerful thank prayer, you. regardless, because regardless, uh, we're in our skin. And oh. that's the one that that's the, the suit that God gave us when we were born. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being with us today. Yes. Again, we thank you, Dr. Uh, Kim, for being with us. Wow. Wonderful commentary. Dr. Uh, Tanya Edwards. Thank you, Dr. Rouse. Uh, thank you so much for Choice Radcliffe for opening us in prayer and for the closing prayer. And let's give a hand for Young Soon Quinn, our administrator of the Zoom yeah. call. Thank you, Minister Quinn. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. God bless. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Moon say, everybody. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you. 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 God bless you. Thank you, everyone. Bless you. 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 Bless you